you, Mr. Wood. Deputy Chair. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, paragraph 8 of the National Interest Analysis says, and I quote, expanded liberalisation of trade is likely to stimulate further economic activity in Australia, leading to job creation. Uh, we heard similar words, perhaps even identical ones, when the China FTA came before the committee. Uh, that FTA came into force on the 20th of December last year. In the months since then, there has been a 40,000 decrease in full-time employment. Total jobs fell by 7,900 as compared to economist predictions that it would rise by 15,000, and unemployment jumped from 5.8 per cent to 6 per cent. Do you think the China FTA coming into force has been a factor in Australia's falling employment? No, Mr Thompson. Uh, let me raise some uh, longer term perspectives. The, the trade deals get hyped up, but the reality is very different. In 2004, John Howard said the US free trade agreement would add enormous long term benefits for the Australian economy. But a decade later, the ANU academic Shiro Armstrong studied the agreement and concluded that all it had really done was to divert some trade from other countries. Uh, with all four FTAs from the decade from 2000 to 2010, Chile, the US, Thailand, Singapore, the balance of trade has deteriorated in each case, with imports greatly outnumbering exports. Uh, you referred to the, the, uh, the question of the TPP's economic outcomes. Uh, the national interest analysis says precious little about this. Um, you cited the World Bank study predicting a GDP increase by 2030 of 0.7 per cent. Uh, the economics editor of The Age, Peter Martin, has described that as almost nothing after 15 years. So my question is, will the department undertake to commission the Productivity Commission to do a rigorous economic evaluation of the TPP on the Australian economy? And I understand the Productivity Commission has offered to do such a study. Thank you for your question, Mr Thompson. We have been monitoring very closely the modelling efforts of um, a number of uh, highly reputed institutes uh, around the world for a number of years now on the TPP. Unlike a bilateral agreement where there's obviously a sort of a binary equation, um, the TPP with its 12 parties has generated a huge amount of interest uh, among uh, economists uh, in the TPP parties. And there has been already um, a large amount of modelling work done. Um, in particular, um, and as I noted in my opening statement, the World Bank has done a very comprehensive model. Uh, and more recently, the Peterson Institute in Washington DC has released a very um, uh, comprehensive modelling exercise, which builds on an earlier modelling exercise that it had done in 2012 on the TPP. So they've been watching this for some time now. Now, we've looked at, in some detail at these models and, uh, and including the basis on which they've done the models. Uh, and and um, our conclusion is that both the Peterson Institute and the World Bank uh, have undertaken a model that we know is very similar to the Productivity Commission's model. Um, now, we could spend a lot of time uh, and effort and resources in modelling something that the Peterson Institute and the World Bank has already done to deliver a similar sort of outcome. Um, we know that what the World Bank has said, which is, 0.7% uh, increase in Australia's GDP and increase exports by 5%. And the Peterson Institute quantified this as a $15 billion increase to Australia's uh, real GDP would be likely what would be delivered uh, in any additional modelling using the same sort of model. Um, we, um, we would note that modelling is one tool among many when you are assessing a free trade agreement of this sort of character and the sort of dimensions here. There's a lot of evidence to support the conclusion that improved market access 
for Australian exports of goods and services and investment and tariff reductions is good for the Australian economy. This provides opportunities. It doesn't mean that business is going to immediately run out and grab those opportunities. Our job is to provide those opportunities. We'd also note in these models that there are some methodological limitations. These aren't, uh, you know, models don't provide every fix in the world. And this is broadly recognised by economists. So when we're modelling a dynamic 12-party deal, there are some real challenges. The impact of liberalising preferential supply chains. It's very, very difficult to do. The value that traders and investors place on certainty. Very difficult to do. And of course, there are a number of chapters um, where, which you, you know, it's very difficult to put some sort of qualitative value on. So all in all, um, Mr Thompson, what I'm saying is uh, we will not be, the government will not be asking the Productivity Commission to do additional modelling. We feel that we have a pretty clear sense of the scope of any modelling outcome at this point. Uh, and we believe that the, the, the outcomes uh, from the TPP, apart from those that are shown through the modelling, stand in their own right. Mr White. Thank you, and thank you.